Now that pretty much sums up the overall basics of HTML. We've introduced some of the new tags that are that are available in HTML5. Uh, granted, there are some other ones, and and we'll throw them in here and there, but most of them have this kind of same uh, idea as the footer, nav, and header. They they act just like a div. The, they're a little more attractive in the code. It's easy to say, okay, here's the footer of the page, here's the header. Um, you know that help that helps out. Um, but we've we've really taken a look at most of the available elements in HTML. But there's one last tag I want to take a look at before we move on into CSS, and that is the image tag. So we'll go ahead and save this as. Now to do this, we're going to go ahead and take a picture that I just pasted into the folder that we have all our examples in. And this is a photo of myself that I use on um, most of our stuff, our radio show and, and uh, the website and such. We're going to go ahead and put the image over here underneath the block quote. Now an image tag is another example of a tag that does not have a closing tag associated with it. And an image tag is actually just IMG. And then, really, we only need one property, kind of like the link. We need to tell the page where is this image. And that is with the source property. Now, and a lot of the editors like Dreamweaver, you might be able to browse for the source. Uh, so you can click on Browse here and take a look at your computer and choose the image you want and say OK. Or we could have simply typed in allen.jpg and we go ahead and close the tag. Now, something that's important to know here is the image is in the folder that the page is in. So that is why we really only have to write out the name of the file. Many times you might have your images in another folder called images in which case we actually need to tell the page that it's within the folder images and that's how that's done so so folder name slash and it's a forward slash so that says look in the folder images and get the file name Allen jpg so to better organize what we're doing here anyway I'm gonna go ahead and um, in Dreamweaver here Choose new folder, and I'm going to call it images. And I'm just going to drag my image into that folder. Uh, Dreamweaver wants to know if there's any files that need to be changed because of us moving this. We'll say no, don't scan. Um, now, if you're not using Dreamweaver, you could have done this in Windows Explorer. Depending on what kind of computer you're using, just navigate to where that file is, create a folder, and move the file in there. So now, when we save this, go ahead and take a look in the browser here, and boom, there's me. Now we've got an issue here. The image is way too big for our column, and it's extending out past our wrap. So to make this work, we need to add some more properties in here. And this is something you can do within the HTML tag, or it's also something you can do in CSS. We're going to do it in the HTML tag here. So if you don't specify a width and a height for an image, it's going to go ahead and use whatever the actual dimensions are. So I know already that this image is a square, so we can safely change the width and height. Um, as long as we keep them the same, we shouldn't see any skewing or anything like that. So we'll do width. equals and height equals now Dreamweaver is telling me that the width and height are 1128 pixels um, so we already know that our column is only 400 pixels wide um, granted there is that padding on the right and the left but the padding is actually in between the elements in the div and the edge of the div so 
really we still only have 400 pixels to work with. So let's just go ahead and use 400 pixels. Now unlike in CSS, we don't specify pixels. We just need to put the number in. So 400 by 400. Go ahead and save this. Refresh. And there we go. Fits nicely in our column. Now when you do use images on your pages, it is okay to resize using HTML or CSS. However, for things like the page load and the look of the image, if you're going to display an image substantially smaller than the actual size of the image, then you might think about actually resizing the image in a photo editing program. Because that won't just make the dimensions smaller, but the file size will be smaller too. Because what we're doing here is we're actually still loading the full image. We're just telling the page not to show it at its full size. So we're adding to the load time. If we were to actually physically shrink this image in a, in a photo editing program, then the file size will be smaller and thus there's less to load on the page. Now before we move on to CSS, I want to note that images are actually inline elements. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this image tag here. And we're going to go ahead and paste it here in our first column. So let's go ahead and make this a little smaller. Let's go ahead and make the, let's just say 190 by 190. Let's save that and look in the browser. There you go. We have a smaller version. And there's definitely enough room to fit another one in there. So let's go ahead and just copy this line and paste it below. Now remember again, inline also means that no matter how I have the code laid out here, just because they're stacked in the code doesn't mean they're going to be stacked or block level on the page or in the browser. So I'm going to save. Refresh, and there you go, they're sitting next to each other.